Before the birth of color photography, the past looked cold and distant. For decades, black and white images were the only way to preserve memories, document history, and glimpse faraway lands. Life itself may have been vibrant, but photography, the new and wondrous invention of the 19th century, could only offer a monochrome echo. By 1839, Daguerre's invention, the daguerreotype, had taken the world by storm. Yet this was a time when the world out there was only ever experienced in varying shades of gray. Until one day, one man changed all that with one remarkable discovery, which for the very first time in human history, brought the entire world into breathtaking color and changed the way we see the world forever. Welcome to Animarta Historia breathing life into historic photographs from around the world to remind us of how we used to live, where we came from, and what made us who we are today. In this episode, we reanimate the oldest color photographs in the world, fragile yet extraordinary glimpses into a world we could never have even imagined. These images are more than just pictures. For the first time in history, humanity saw its own reflection in all its glory, in full, vivid, and spectacular color. In 1861, the first permanent color photograph was produced by Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell, using a method that combined red, green, and blue filters. Though groundbreaking, it would take several more decades and the ingenuity of inventors like the Lumiere brothers for color photography to become truly viable. In 1907, they introduced the world's first commercially successful color photography process, the autochrome Lumiere, using a mosaic of dyed potato starch grains. It captured the world in delicate, dreamlike tones, revealing colors as they were truly seen for the very first time. Suddenly, people could see the real hues of a soldier's uniform, a child's dress, or a dusty street from a century ago. It made history feel alive, relatable, and human. Color photography has always been about more than technology. It's about connection the feeling of seeing someone's eyes, their clothes, the world they stood in, not as a distant past, but as a shared moment. As we reanimate the oldest color photographs in history, we don't just bring them to life, we honor the people in them. Their stories, their time. They show us that the world has always been full of life, beauty, and stories waiting to be told again, in motion, in memory, and now for the first time they can be remembered in beautiful and vivid color. Ethelreda Lang, an English woman of rare artistic vision, embraced the autochrome when color photography was still a wonder. From her Oxford garden, she created scenes of quiet beauty, her daughters among the flowers, the air alive with light and bloom. She worked with patience, arranging them in the soft glow of afternoon until the glass plates caught every hue. The green of leaves, the blush of petals, the warmth of youth. More than photographs, they were fragments of Edwardian life, held forever in the gentle colors of a world just beginning to dream in light. The Archives of the Planet Between 1908 and 1931, French banker Albert Kahn sponsored an ambitious project to photograph human cultures all around the world. The archives of the planet resulted in 183,000 meters of film and 72,000 color photographs from 50 countries, beginning on a round-the-world trip that Kahn took with his chauffeur. Inspired by his internationalist and pacifist beliefs, the project grew to encompass expeditions to Brazil, rural Scandinavia, the Balkans, North America, the Middle East, Asia, and West Africa, among other destinations, and documented historical events such as the aftermath of the Second Balkan War, World War I in France, and the Turkish War of Independence. 
After Khan lost most of his fortune in the stock market crash of 1929, the project finally came to a halt in 1931, but not before capturing a vast array of stunning color images from all around the world. These are those photos. When asked about the motivation behind his ambitious archives project, Albert Kahn said to capture once and for all the practices, the facets, and the forms of human activity whose final disappearance is only a question of time. Sitting here looking at these images from our modern perspective, it's easy to forget the context in which these remarkable photographs were taken. This was a time when tourism was still an activity reserved for the elite and wealthy. It wasn't until after the Second World War that the mass tourism industry began in earnest, where travel became a leisure activity accessible to people from all walks of life. Photography was still in its infancy and was yet to become the common everyday tool which most of us have at our disposal on smartphones or digital cameras. As for color photography, well, that was something completely new and bewitching. It's hard to imagine a world before color, but Khan's project took place at a unique time in history, a time when it was now possible to show the world how the other half live, but in fully realized form for the first time. He truly seized the moment with both hands and produced images unlike any others ever taken before. His photographs documented a wide range of subjects, from Buddhist monks in China and Mongolia to fishermen in the Netherlands. For the vast majority of people around the globe, they had never before seen any images of everyday folk from different parts of the world, never mind ones in real color. His camera even documented restrained prisoners in strange and extreme prisons, like this image of a chained man in Mongolia, or this bizarre image captured by photographer Stefan Passe, which even featured in the 1922 National Geographic magazine. It was the publishers who made the claim that the woman was condemned to die of starvation as a punishment for adultery. Since then, many people expressed doubts over the story, although the authenticity of the photo is undisputed. It's clear to see that some unusual punishments were being dished out in Mongolia in the 19th century. The vast majority of photographs taken for the Archives project revolved around people living in different countries and exotic cultures from all across the globe. At this early stage in the history of photography, images of this nature were very rarely captured in print and were certainly never seen in color before. Over the course of this challenging project, Albert Kahn hired around a dozen photographers and camera operators to ensure an array of different styles and techniques were used to capture a variety of subject matter. These fascinating portraits in particular stand out for their pure aesthetic simplicity and intimacy. The impactful nature of color photography really brings even the oldest pictures into the present and allows us, the viewers, even over a century later, to feel even closer to the people before us. One can only imagine what horrors this woman might have seen as the lens captured her during one fleeting moment during the Great War. Khan's cameras stood before local people from all walks of life and all generations. From the elders in society with their life experiences etched on their faces and the strong, hard-working village folk taking a moment to pose for these new and cumbersome camera contraptions for images that they will most likely never get to see for themselves. To the next generation, many of whom will have had no concept of photography at such a young age, in a time when the medium was truly in its infancy. This Vietnamese teenager sits at a table, oblivious to the fact that in her lifetime, she will experience the devastation of the Vietnam War. Whilst this beautiful young German woman innocently looks out of her window at a time in history that predates both the First and Second World Wars, 
Or this young Italian girl sat pensively in Verona. Could she be contemplating the past four years as the First World War reaches its conclusion? This photo of a young Syrian family taken in 1921 looked back at us decades before their country finally gained its independence in 1946. It wasn't only the local people and common folk who received special attention during the project years. Sometimes the photographers came across royalty too, as seen here with these two 19th century princes from Albania and India respectively. Other photographs showed people at work, like this young woman weaving a carpet in Algeria. With the new autochrome process at their disposal, the photographers must have been drawn to colorful subjects like this or these candy sellers in rural Sweden. And with so many unique and wonderful cultures to capture on film for future posterity, part of the mission was to seek out traditional costumes and activities, like this Japanese dancer performing in 19th century Japan. Or this man riding an elephant in India, a scene very rarely seen outside of the country at this time in history. These Macedonian children pose for the camera in their traditional costumes, in what was most likely the first color picture ever taken of such unique clothing. The same might be said of the outfits worn by this group of Algerian musicians and dancers from the turn of the century. Their ornate headwear, jewelry, and bright clothing must have been in stark contrast to some of the Western clothing during that period. As seen here, with the more muted colors and natural tones of the clothes worn by these Irish villagers from Galway. And just like the bright and colorful attire of these Iranian women, much of the clothing and footwear we see in these images will have been crafted by hand, using knowledge passed down from generation to generation. Even cultures living on remote islands in the 19th century spent time crafting the most beautiful and intricate garments, using rich and vibrant colors to adorn themselves. As we sit back, relaxing in front of our smart TVs, phones, and tablets, watching glimpses of our history move before our very eyes in full color and high definition, it's easy to forget exactly what it is that we are looking at. Living in the present day with all our gadgetry and entertainment, it's almost impossible to imagine a time before technology a time when the world outside our window was a complete mystery full of wonder. History allows us to contemplate our past and consider how those millions of people that live before us live their lives and what struggles and joys they may have encountered along the way. It is also worth noting that the reason so many subjects are not smiling in early historic photographs was due to the lengthy exposure times required to allow sufficient light into the camera. These modern AI reanimations may not always be historically accurate, but they do allow us to experience the past in a new and more relatable way by creating video prompts that bring life to the past with joy and happiness. It can be very easy to forget sometimes that the only thing separating us from the people of our past is time. Despite living in different eras, in different countries, with unique life experiences relative to our surrounding environment and societal expectations of the day, we are all connected through our humanity. We all breathe the same air, under the same sun. It is important to stop sometimes, to take a moment to reflect on how we got here, and to acknowledge how vastly life has changed in such a short space of time. History allows us to view ourselves in completely alien contexts and situations and forces us to reevaluate our present lives before considering which direction we may be heading as a species.
The project's focus shifted dramatically with the outbreak of World War I in 1914. Despite his internationalist ideals, Kahn remained a French patriot. He redirected his photographers to document the war's toll on France, from devastated towns and anxious civilians to trenches, military equipment, and hospital scenes, forming about 20% of the overall collection. At a time when most photographic records of war were monochrome and impersonal, these autochromes brought a shocking immediacy and emotional depth. The colors made the past feel startlingly present, as if threading the century-old world into our living memory. These were not the war images people were used to, grainy black and white ghosts from the front. Instead, here were soldiers in blue-gray uniforms, villages in ruins, nurses in white, all captured in delicate color. The autochrome process, with its soft, painterly tones, breathed life into an event so often seen only in shadow. For the first time, viewers could see the war as it truly looked. The pale dust of the trenches, the deep red of the Croix de Guerre, pinned to a nurse's chest, the golden light falling on shattered stone. The effect was unsettling. Color stripped away the comfortable distance of history. It made the war feel immediate, intimate, and heartbreakingly human. To those who saw these images in the years after the armistice, they were more than records. They were reminders. Reminders that the men in the trenches were not abstractions, but young faces with weary eyes. In Khan's color photographs, the war was no longer something that happened long ago. It was here, in front of you, in the vivid hues of memory, impossible to ignore and impossible to forget. These fragile moments, captured more than a century ago, are more than just the oldest color photographs in the world. They are windows, not into distant history, but into living, breathing days that once unfolded in full color, just as our own do now. We see people who never knew they would be remembered, yet whose faces now look back at us across the gulf of time. Color has the power to dissolve the barrier between then and now. It reminds us that history is not made of statues and dates, but of moments, fleeting, ordinary, and human. Thanks to the ingenuity and perseverance of the pioneers of color photography, Philanthropists like Albert Kahn had the means and the technology to capture a world that had never been seen before. These are the oldest color photographs in the world, glimpses of a time that is gone, but can never be, and must never be, forgotten. <laughs>